Hello and welcome to this tutorial uh, about using plugins to uh, have buttons on your posts to encourage users to share your content. Um, so the, the plugin that I recommend for this is called Flare and you may have seen if I've built my website uh, or your website um, for you. Um, I've probably installed Flare for you and just uh, given you the default settings which come straight out of the box. Um, so just to give you a bit of an idea of exactly what um, I mean by Flare and exactly which bit of the site that actually appears on, I'm going into Terry's site here and going over to her blog page. Now, if I open up this blog post, you can see just up the top here, you've got something um, called flares, and this comes from your flare plugin. So as you can see at the moment, this has got zero flares. Um, if I wanted to, I could tweet this, or I could like it on Facebook. So I put a link on my Facebook uh, news um, kind of reel. Now, there are a number of options with flare. Um, and oh, just to say also as well, they don't just appear up the top, you can also set them on the left hand side, so as a person scrolls down, they still have options to share your content as they're reading the article. Okay, so I'm going to go back into the WordPress administration area. Now, if you have Flare installed already, you'll see just on the left hand navigation bar, there's an area called Flare, and that is where you'll find your settings. If you don't already have Flare installed, you can do this. You simply need to go into the plugins area and install Flare. And you can um, actually see how to do that in the plugin um, tutorial that I've got in my tutorial bank. Okay, so I'm going to open up the Flare settings here. So as you can see at the very top, it uh, talks about uh, whereabouts the bar display. So I have the option of putting it at the top of the post and floating it on the left hand side. So if I just open up that um, drop down menu, I could also change that to the right if I wanted to. And let's see, I could also put it at the bottom of the post as well if I wanted to do that. Um, and then just by default, it goes up the top and it goes on the right as well. So there's a few different options there. You can have three instances basically on the one page. Okay, so next you've got the styling options for your um, sharing bar. So here we've got the button type, so you can change the style of the button there. You can change the background colour as well. You can switch um, how many people have shared your content on or off, so that's the number that you will have seen next to the flares. You can switch off the total flare count if you wanted to, so that's how many people overall have shared on Facebook plus Twitter plus uh, Google Plus Plus, whatever other social networks you're using. Um, you can allow visitors to hide the vertical share bar. So if, if you think users might get a little bit annoyed as they're scrolling down and reading your article, um, and then the share bar appears on the left and they think, God, that's really annoying, I want to turn that off, you can um, switch on um, the ability for them to switch it on or off. Um, so I'm going to keep that ticked, I think that's quite a good thing to have there. And you can also hide the flare count. So if you think, well, this is a brand new article and or it's a whole brand new website, I don't really want people knowing that, you know, this hasn't been out there for, you know, all that long. You could actually just hide your flare count if it's under, say, 20. And then once it goes over that, it will display that number only. So you've got quite a lot of control in here. Right, so moving further down our options list. Here we have button options. So this is where you can add and remove buttons from your sharing bar. So as you can see by default, it's given me Twitter and it's given me Facebook. Now I'm just gonna use the, the default settings here. I mean, I can change the color of that if I wanted to. So if you want to align that to the color of your site, you can do. Um, I'm just using the defaults here because that's what users recognize because these are the actual icons and logos from these social um, media networks. All right, gosh, I've just lost my page there. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna add a new sharing button here and I'm just gonna show you the different options that we have so you can add Google Plus if you think a lot of your users are using Google Plus. You can also add, I think this is Dig, to be honest, I don't use these ones very much. I think that's Dig and I think, oh, that might be Share This. I'm not 100% sure about these two. To be honest, I don't know that many people on there, but if you think your audience are on these networks, you should be using that. Pinterest, I think, is also quite a good one. It's quite up and coming. So personally, I use that on my site. 
Uh, this is LinkedIn. So if you've got quite a professional site and you're linking with other professionals and that's an area that you want to expand your presence in, then LinkedIn is a good place to be sharing your content. And then also you can um, have an email button as well. So if you want um, to give users the ability to send an email to their friends when they see your blog post and maybe that you think that that might be, they might think it's quite good for their friend to see, you can give them that ability as well. And then finally on the right hand side, this is Buffer. So if someone's quite a, a social media um, heavy, heavy user, they might be using Buffer, which is basically an application that queues their updates so they can save them and queue up updates that will go out at certain times on certain days. So if you think a lot of your users are using Buffer, then you might want to give them access to that. Now I'd say as a, as a minimum, I'd say you probably want to use Google Plus because quite a lot of users are on Google Plus these days. So I'm going to click Google, ugh, sorry, click Google Plus and add that button there. And I'm also going to add an email button as well. I think that people, um, you know, like to share by email still quite a lot. And so this is the default options. You know, if someone clicks on that, they're going to get an email pop up. And so you can change the subject line on that email. Um, you know, so by default, it's going to say, check out this article I found on your blog name. And then there's a bit of text in the email body there as well. Um, these are the codes to, to put insert the link, the title and your blog name. So you won't want to play around with those actual pieces of code, but you can change the text that appears around that. Now, that's about it. Um, finally, you probably want to, to have some control over where you want your share bar to appear on your site. So do you just want it on your blogs? If so, tick posts only. Do you want it to appear on your content pages as well? So things like your about page or your services page, you would tick that if you want that to appear there too. Um, you might have a portfolio on your website, so you can also add it to your portfolio area. And also media. I mean, if you're not um, in a kind of media-based site posting, you know, videos and things like that, you probably won't be using that or the Woo framework either. So these are probably the three areas, post pages and portfolios, that you might actually want to add share buttons to. So there we go. I'm going to click Save. And that's going to update all of my settings on my Flare. And then I'm going to go back out to Terry's site and have a look at her test article that she's created. And let's see what that looks like now. There we go. We have a number of different share buttons there. You can see I've added email, Google+, Facebook and Twitter. And as I scroll down, her share bar is also appearing on the left. So there you have it, that's social sharing buttons using the Flare plugin.